Master God, we thank you. We praise you for your love and kindness. Thank you for being our God. We pray as we pause in your presence that you would speak to our hearts and minds. Lead us, dear God, in the path that we should take, that we might bring you honor and glory. Lord, we pray that your strength will flow through us, but it also be tampered with your love, that we would be your representatives in this, your world. Yes, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Tonight we're going to, uh, again, revisit Sunday's, Sunday's message. And we're talking about looking at being guardians of the gospel, mm. Take, taking care of the gospel. Because it, it seems to me, maybe to you as well, that the world attacks the word of God. And, and in so doing, trying to rob us of the power of knowing God in and through his word. Mm -hmm. It tries to get us to be um, spiritualists rather than spiritual. Mm -hmm. uh, we, the, the world claims to always be connected to the spirit, but it's not always the spirit of God that it's connecting <laughs> to. And um, so we, we talk about the cosmos and, 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 and you know, all the things that come back, karma and, mm -hmm. and, all, and, all, that, and all that kind of stuff rather than talking about being faithful to the Lord uh, mm. according to his word, that the spirit of the risen one might lead and guide and direct us. Yeah. So it's a difference in being connected to God and being spiritual unto God and being a spiritualist, somebody who dabs with spirits. <laughs> that's a, that's a, 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 a far different thing and it's quite dangerous. Amen. But if you have your Bible, let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy, and we'll look at verse 4. I'm sorry, chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 4, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And we're going to begin at verse 3. It says, For the, the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, mm -hmm. but having itching ears, they mm -hmm. will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, mm -hmm. and will turn for, away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Mm -hmm. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Amen. Okay, so when we look at, at what God has done and what God is doing and telling us in his word, um, we, we discover that it's not always, it's not always easy to, to follow God's word, right? Mm -hmm. It's not always the, the simplest uh, thing to do, but it's always the, the best thing for us. Yeah. And I discovered that there are a multitude of reasons to do things other than the way God wants you to do it. Mm -hmm. But there's only one reason, mm -hmm. only one reason to do things God's way. Yeah. And that's simply to glorify God. Yeah. If we start doing things, trying to do things God's way for any other reason, that's going to fail us and we're going to get disappointed. If we try to pay our tithes so the windows of heaven open up, mm -hmm. and we pay our tithes and end up broke, we're going to say it didn't work. <laughs> if, if, we try, if we try to say we forgive people so we can be forgiven, but we forgive and they, t and they don't forgive us or they don't act right, we're going to say it didn't work. Mm -hmm. So trying to do things God's way for the wrong reason or for reason other than simply to glorify God will always leave us messed up. You know why? Because it's the same thing as choosing not to do it God's way. <laughs> if I choose to do something God's way for the wrong reason, it's really for me. Mm. If, so if I choose to do, if I choose to pay my tithes so the windows of heaven open up and, and I can receive a blessing, that ain't for God or His church. That's for me. Come on. That's the that's the same spirit that says don't pay your tithes. <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's a selfish, self-centered type of thing. Mm. So if I, if I forgive someone simply so I can be forgiven or, or if my, you know, something happens, I help somebody so my kids can be helped or I can be helped when I need it, that ain't for God's glory. 
that's that's an insurance policy. Mm. That's to say, when I get in trouble, I got enough credit that somebody gonna help me. Mm -hmm. It's the same. It's the same spirit. The spirit of, of of looking at pertaining those things that pertain to self. That's what the motivation is, and that motivation to take care of self will always disappoint us. Mm -hmm. It will. Why? Because it closes God out of it. So when we look, we're, as we're looking at this thing, taking care of the gospel, living for God's glory, doing the right thing, doing the holy thing, the only reason to do the holy thing, one reason only, is to glorify God. Hallelujah. To glorify God. So I pay my tithes, I'm still broke, but God is glorified. If I forgive somebody and they still, they're crazy, they still act up, well, God is glorified. Yeah. You know, no matter if I do the right thing because it glorifies God, then I'm always good because yes. I'll never be disappointed. Why? Because yes. God will be glorified. Yeah. But if I do it for the wrong reason, then I, I, I set myself up for a difficult path. So when I say that to say as we go through this thing, Paul is saying here, he's writing, he's writing to Timothy, and he says his, his last letter, this is the last word we get from Paul. Mm. Paul, Paul is saying to his son, Timothy, which he's saying to us through him, that, that the time's going to come when folk are going to choose a lie over the truth. Mm. The time's going to come when they ain't going to want to hear sound doctrine. Yes. They don't, this, you know, we, we made that today. They don't want to hear sensible teaching. Mm. What he's saying is they don't want the truth. Right. They don't want to know what is real. Now, we, it's easy for us to sit here and say they don't want to know. But let's make it personal. Come on. Do we really want to know God's truth? Mm -hmm. Do we really want to be held accountable to doing what we know God expects of us? Mm -hmm. Or do we find a preacher, a teaching, a mm -hmm. scripture, a, a, a promise in the promise book mm -hmm. that's going to, going to fit me and make me feel good about where I'm at? Mm -hmm. do, do I really want to, to be reminded that God wants holiness? When, when, when I can hear somebody says your best is good enough, mm. where, where, where am I and where are you in your own estimation in terms of on this thing? Do, do we really accept God's truth? And when we really look at it, you know, the time has come that, we're, that folk in this world would rather hear an easy word that's a lie and a hard word mm. that is true. Mm -hmm. I'd rather make it, tell me something that's going to take de-stress me, mm. even if it's not particularly true, mm. rather than tell me a truth that's going to challenge me. If I get challenged, I'm going to leave. Mm. Because, because does God really make you feel bad? Mm. That, that's, that's the kind of stuff that's going on, and we need to ask ourselves: What what makes you mad? <laughs> what what do you what, what do you get angry about? Somebody right. hurt your feelings? Uh -huh. I mean, what 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 makes you concerned? What what make, what brings passion out of you? What make you cry? What make you laugh? Is it truth? Is it God's truth that 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 encourages your heart? That that motivates your living? Or Clifford Wright, is it you hearing what you want to hear, getting what you want to get, and being who you say you are? Is that really what motivates you? Mm. I'm, I'm living for me. I'm living my best life. What is that? <laughs> what, is, what is your best life? If you don't know what your past, you can't fully explain your past life. Mm. So how do you know what your best life is? Mm. When, when best is something that's always becoming anyway, right? Mm. You, can you ever know that you got your best? Mm. You don't know what's best until it's over. Mm. So we have to come to this, this place where, where we're willing to trust God. Paul, Paul says to Timothy, Timothy, man, the world that you're in, the world that you got to preach in, did you have minister in? Folk ain't gonna hear the truth. Mm. And that's gonna be a challenge to you because you're gonna have to live truth in a world where folks don't want to hear truth. Jesus. You're gonna have you're gonna have to speak truth mm. in a place where people reject truth. Mm. So, so the time is coming when that's not gonna happen. And and not only that, they're gonna base their lives on the lie. Mm. They're, they're, they're gonna reject sound sound judgment, but they're going to live based upon the deception. So when they start calling right wrong and wrong right, 
they're gonna live as though wrong really is right. Mm. <laughs> they're gonna start. They're gonna live their lives based upon the lie. Glory. And you're gonna be challenged to stand up for the truth, even though they're saying now that you're lying, that you're living a lie, that you're narrow-minded, that you're you're hateful, you're vindictive. All the words that they give you when we stand up and say sin is sin. Mm. If you stand up and say, nah, that's sin is sin. I love you, but that's still wrong. Mm. When we say that, they fight against us. Well, yeah. we, ain't, we ain't got, again, the, we, I can't stand here, look out there and say, that's what they do. I got to ask myself, is that what I do? Come on. Do, do, I, get, do I get a little upset when people start pointing out the fallacies and the flaws in my life? Mm-hmm. When, when, when the Lord puts a mirror in front of me and says, this is not holy and you shouldn't be doing it, do I, do I say, yes, Lord, I start offering excuses mm-hmm. why I, I, I have to do it this way. When, when God tells me to help somebody and I don't help them, do I have to say, well, God, you don't know what they said to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't know what they did to me, God. Well, then how foolish is that? <laughs> Which one of us don't have faith? The one need help with me telling God what he don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have to come to the place where we're willing to, to, to live holy and be holy in a world that, that, that rejects truth. But I, it starts with me holding me accountable to God's word. Glory if God. I give myself a if I give myself a pass, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, money is so easy because money, money, everybody, money and power, money, power, and sex is like it's like the things that, that everybody follow, everybody fight over, everybody know. And it really is money and and and, and, and sex because both of those equal power. Okay. <laughs> For, people fight over it all the time. So money is easy. So if I say if, if sin is sin with God, who thinks sin is sin with God? Is is sin? Sin is sin, right? Okay. No big sin, no little sin, right? Okay. Glory to God. Right, so, so if sin is sin, if sin, if sin is sin, if I rob God of His tithe, what make a difference to somebody who 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 rapes a little girl or murders somebody? All right. See, that's hard for us to hear because it's a sin that we don't do. Right. But what about when there's the sin is the sin that we do? Mm. Yeah. With, with, if, if my if my sin if my sin ain't, ain't going out beating up people, but my sin just might be that I gossip too much. <laughs> my my sin my sin is I may I may not be robbing people, uh, uh, mugging people, carjacking folk, or or, or or selling people in the sex trade. I may not be doing that. Mm. But what what happens if I'm the one who rob who who's robbed God of his tithe so the church can't help somebody get off the street and they end up in the slave market? Glory, mm-hmm. Pastor Jesus. So what's what's the difference? If sin is sin and I don't do what I'm supposed to do, mm-hmm. then then the result of that is still sinful. Glory. It's still against God's will. Which it's the same. It, what's the wages of sin? Death. death. So the wages of big sin is death. Wages of little sin is getting sick, a cold. <laughs> <laughs> big sin is death. Little sin, common cold. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> the wages that's, of that's sin. That's what we think. It's death. Jesus. It didn't say it didn't give us a degree of sin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's not, it's not a sliding scale of death. <laughs> you know, my sin's on the sliding scale because Ooh. God understands my situation. <laughs> yeah, he understood your situation before you ever had those words written. Mm-hmm. The wages of sin is death. Jesus. So, so Paul is saying to Timothy, get ready. Because the folk that you talk to ain't going to hear it. And when you tell them stuff like I just said, they're going to have all the reasons why not. Because they, the worst sin in the world is the one I don't commit. And the worst sinner in the world is the one I'm not. Come on. That's right. The, and if you really want to see a real bad sinner, <laughs> look at somebody who sinned against me. Okay. He who commits sin against me is the worst sinner in the world. Wow. Jesus. And, and the sin I don't commit, that's worse. Now, the sin I commit, nah, I ain't that bad, you know. <laughs> Get over it. The world understands that. And I ain't really that bad of a sinner. I don't do it all the time anyway. Come on. Wow. 
That's how that's how we think. What but what is that? That's lying. What we we rejected the truth of God's word and, and accept something in its place. Mm. Holiness is still right, church. Glory. Living for God and doing it God's way is still right. I don't care how many people in this world will validate you, accommodate you, and pacify you because of your sin. It is still sin and it's still wrong. Amen. It is. So so he's saying here, no, Timothy, that's what you're going to have to, 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 to face. They're not going to deal with what's going on. Why? Because they want a gospel. I want a gospel. And chances are you want a gospel that accommodate your natural tendencies. Mm -hmm. I want a gospel that fit around my human fallacy. On, I want a gospel that have, have the holes in the right place to make me comfortable. Come on. And, and I, 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 will, I will go on a search. I will market <laughs> for a gospel mm -hmm. that make me feel okay. Jesus. A gospel that tell me that, that, that I'm okay like I am, God love me like I am, mm. that I don't have to change, God knows who I am, God's going to make me better. I want that kind of gospel because that kind of gospel don't challenge me to be better. It just, it just changes God to fit my fallen nature. Mm. <laughs> the, that's not a gospel at all. That's not a gospel. That's a lie. And, Tim, and, and Timothy is told by his, his spiritual father, Paul, be careful because the world that you live in, that's the kind of gospel they want. Jesus. And you know what, church? That's the kind of world we live in. And you know further? That's the kind of world that I contribute to. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm not careful, if you're not careful, mm -hmm. we will also want a God who accommodates me. A God who understands when I mess up, but don't understand when you mess up. Mm -hmm. A God who, <laughs> God who accepts my faults, but not yours. Mm -hmm. A God, a God who forgives me because He knows my heart, but holds you accountable because of what you did. Jesus. See, I'll begin to want that kind of a God, and when I want that kind of a God, I'm the people that Paul's talking about. Mm -hmm. That I, 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 I reject sound doctrine. So I ask you, do you, do you fall there sometimes? <laughs> that, that sometimes that's the kind of gospel you want then that's where your fight then that's where your fight is mm -hmm. your fight is to live holy to get rid of that stuff to overcome the excuse that you give yourself mm -hmm. to overcome the buy well, I, you know, I, I would have done it but well get rid of that but mm -hmm. I, I wanted to do it but you know, that one gotta go too mm -hmm. you don't understand my situation I don't but you do do God's will in it you see, because because what we 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 say you don't understand my situation. Like my situation is different than the whole situation confronted by every other person in the world. Yeah. You see, it's called life, mm -hmm. and we all got hard places, up and downs in life. We got difficult places, got places in life that we don't think we can overcome. We got places in life that don't like there's no bottom to it. There's places in life that seem like it's too heavy to lift. We all have those places. And so if I allow those places to, to give me permission to excuse God, mm -hmm. then somehow God didn't know that was going to show up in my life, right? Mm -hmm. Because he says I can do all things. Mm -hmm. So either God is wrong or I'm, I'm giving too much power to the hard place in my life. Mm -hmm. Which one? I, I think so. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. I get, you know, I'm talking about me. <laughs> that, I, I do that sometimes, okay? So, what, what we have to do is, is, he said, fulfill ministry. How do you do that in a world that's not only a world that rejects truth, but sometimes I want to reject the truth? Uh, how, do I, how do I do my ministry and be faithful to God? Not, not just in a world that, that will live based on a deception, but sometimes I live based on the deception. Mm -hmm. I tell myself it's okay when I really know it's not. Jesus. I tell myself that God is satisfied, God is pleased, when I really know he's not. Jesus. And I tell myself that God understands and he's okay when I really know he's understanding and he wants me to change. Mm. Mm -hmm. How do I live this way and, 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 and do fulfill the ministry, be a guardian of the gospel, the, God, the, the gospel that I preach and the, God, the gospel that I live by? How do I be a guardian of that mm -hmm. in this situation? 
But I suggest to you that the way that we're guarding it, the way we deal with that, is Paul gives us right here in, in the text. He said, be sober-minded, endure suffering, and do the work of an evangelist. Be sober-minded, be, be, be rational, think, think this stuff through, okay? Endure suffering. Don't get scared and run every time life gets hard. Mm. Don't, don't quit, look for a side door every time it's difficult. Endure the difficult places. In, endure the dip, don't be crushed by the difficult places and he says do the work of evangelist get your mind off yourself and tell somebody else about the goodness of the Lord yeah. go help somebody else discover what it is to live whole and holy within the presence of almighty God yeah. do the work of an evangelist so, so if I'm sober minded if I'm willing to endure suffering and I'm, and, and I'm suffering because I'm going to tell somebody else about who Jesus is. He suggests that that's not only being a, what I'm calling the guardian of the gospel. That's how I, that's how you live holy in an unholy world. Mm. That's how we choose truth over lies. Mm. Mm. Stop giving yourself a pass, Clifford Lord. Wright. Mm. Stop giving yourself a pass. Stop giving yourself an excuse to, to, to put God on the back burner, to make mm. God last, to, to put stuff in front of God. Stop giving yourself an excuse. If I'm going to sin, if you're going to sin, let's at least be grown enough to say, I'm sinning by choice. Mm. 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 That don't even sound bad. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we won't say it. Uh -huh. <laughs> But the truth is, you know it, and that's what you do. Because you know what? No one, no, no one, no, no, nobody sins by accident. All sin is premeditated. Come on, Pastor. All sin is premeditated. Jesus. You decide, I decide to sin every I didn't know. I I I, I didn't know. I sinned by act. No, you didn't. <laughs> it was an accident. No, you, know, you, you might be able to claim ignorance. Okay. But that's no real defense, especially when you don't read your work. But <laughs> so you might be able to say, I didn't know. Okay. But then the, it, that 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 brings in a different indictment. Mm. See, if I say I didn't know, that suggests that I'm, I'm not hearing the Spirit of God whose, whose job is to lead me into truth. Mm. So if I don't know, <laughs> then that means that <laughs> either, either the Spirit of God is not <laughs> listening or I can't hear him. Oh. Mm. So ignorance only suggests a divide. Mm. But that's, 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 that's not it, all right? So, <laughs> but, but everybody, you may have a split second or 15 years to figure out how you're going to sin or know, or stop sinning. But you got that time. Mm. And you got enough time to make the right choice. Mm. Think about it. The matters you ever got just exploded. Got ready to cut somebody out. You knew you were supposed to do it. <laughs> Before that first cuss word flew out your mouth, you knew you should keep your mouth shut. Just walk away. Jesus. But you don't. But you don't. And pretty soon the floodgates of hell open up and here it comes. That's a right. The head move, you, you're getting them told. And, and if you does not cuss, you're going to tell all the cuss words in your head. But, but you, you, have, you have sanitized them by the time they get out your mind. So you do Christian cussing. What the heck you want? <laughs> you have said the word. <laughs> but you sanitize it before it comes out. I didn't cuss. Yeah, you did. The Lord heard you. You just didn't say it out loud. Guilty. Uh, <laughs> so, so all, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, let's 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 know that that if we're going if we're if we're going to sin, we're 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 doing it because there's a choice. Uh, okay. You, I don't <laughs> sin. You don't sin. Nobody sin against their will. Okay. <laughs> no one sins against their against their will. Mm. We sin according to our will. Mm. Okay? Mm. All right. So.
Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, he's, and he deals with, with being sober-minded. He, he, he later on says, I fought a good fight. Why? Because they go together. Uh, See, to be, so, to be sober-minded is to be um, um, un understanding, to, to, have, to be rational, to, to, be have, to be clear of thought, okay? It's, it's, it's to be able to think, to think things through in a, in a, in a good, uh, rational way. It's, it's to, be, to be sober. Anybody here ever been drunk or high to the point that, that uh, you, 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 you walk crooked and you thought you was walking straight? <laughs> or, or you ever been to, to, to the place where, where, where you, you, you tried to walk and you couldn't walk? You, you're, you're, you you ever been you ever been there? Uh, and, and kind, and kind, and kind, see that that's that's not sober. <laughs> In fact, that's probably the opposite of sober. You know what else is? You know what else the opposite of sober? Is when you get so angry you can't see straight. Come on. When you become so full of rage and jealousy mm. that it starts controlling how you think and how you view people. That's not sober either. Mm -hmm. You know what else is not sober? Mm. Just as bad as being so drunk you can't get off the bed. It's, it, it, it's having your, your, your heart so full of bitterness, unforgiveness, that you can't stand to see, think, or, or, or hear something or someone's name without it doing something all to you inside. Wow. That's just as bad as being drunk and you wow. can't walk. Wow. See, it's, th that, that's, not being, that, that's also not being sober. Uh, Sober is a state of mind, a state of spiritual being, where where we we so are, we're focused on God, and God is controlling so that we're we're able to hear Him rationally. We're able to think about what He wants us to hear and think about in a way that honors Him and give Him glory. That's sober-minded. Yes. And, and 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 think about it. He said, "Be sober-minded." We think drunk is is my body. I kept falling down. <laughs> Being drunk, even even uh, with, with Jack Daniel, I had too much Jack. It ain't messed up your arm. It messed up your head. Come on, mm -hmm. Pastor. It made your head bad. Glory. Be why? Because that's the place of the battle. That's what. That's where the enemy attacks. Mm -hmm. He attacks mm -hmm. yeah. the mind. Mm -hmm. and, and and it's something about science, you know. And, and science is, is is cool in its place. I I heard somewhere, and it made me kind of stay away from drugs because. What I heard was that that brain cells didn't didn't come back. <laughs> I, I, I heard you know if, 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 if you lost a cell in your arm, it would grow back, you know. And, but brain cells, you lose them. And I figured I didn't have that many. Okay, Pastor. <laughs> Jesus. I, there's a whole bunch of stuff I didn't understand. So I figured it was the brain cells that I was missing that the reason I couldn't understand the stuff I couldn't understand. So I did. I didn't want to lose any more because I figured <laughs> if I lost brain cells, I'd probably be more stuff I didn't understand, which would make me a little bit dumber. So <laughs> I didn't want to lose brain cells. <laughs> but do you ask, on, a, on a spiritual level, ask yourself, why is it that brain cells don't grow back? Mm, mm. What is 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 it? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not good enough at this at the science stuff to tell you that if you lose brain cells, you really you can lose intelligence. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but from experience, I've seen people look used to be smart today and so smart tomorrow. Jesus, Jesus. Now I don't know if it's because they lost brain cells. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. But but my point is this: Why if if intelligence is attached to the physical? Uh, uh, nature of, of, of your brain, the thinking apparatus, mm -hmm. if the thinking apparatus dies or gets smaller, does that mean the equate to intelligence? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But what I do know it equates to that as my mind is, is shaped and formed, so my body performs. Mm -hmm. So if the enemy can control my mind, mm -hmm. he controls my body. Mm. He controls my mouth. Mm. If he can control my mind, he'll determine what I look at. Mm. He'll determine what I say to people. He'll mm. even determine the affections of my heart. Mm -hmm. If the enemy can control my mind, he'll tell me the passion of my body is more important than the desires of my heart. Jesus. 
So, so I can love. If he can control my mind, it's not true, baby. It's an example. If he can control my mind, <laughs> if he can control my mind, he can say the love that you feel for your heart, for your wife, is not as important as the passion I'm making you feel for Lady X. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so he, he can have a way of overriding the natural order of things. Why? Because if, he, if the enemy gets your mind, you go from sober-minded to irrational. So if I'm so angry I can't think straight, I'm irrational. Mm -hmm. Who's controlling my mind? Mm -hmm. If I'm so if I'm so 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 high or inebriated that I can't function, can't think straight, I'm irrational. Who's controlling my mind? So the in, so Paul is saying, be sober-minded, be be focused on God. Have your life in God's hand, where God is ordering your mind. He's ordering what you think that you're concentrating on him. That's why in Philippians, Paul told us to think on these things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Things that are pure. The things that are holy. The things that are kind. Yes? Like Jesse Jesus. Huh? Just see Jesus. Like, like just see Jesus. Exactly. We want, we want to make sure that we, that we see him. That, that we stay focused on who Christ is. Mm -hmm. Now that's, admittedly, that's increasingly hard the older we get, and the crazier this world gets. Amen. Because there are so many things attacking us, so many things wrong. People are doing so many things that we just seem just totally outrageous to mm. us. It makes it, that is just pure evil. Mm. How, how do they mm. do that? And, and the older you get, the more difficult because you start seeing the world. Time is moving so fast; it's almost Christmas. It's gonna be Christmas again tomorrow <laughs> because it just moves right. so fast, and life is moving, and it gets hard. Mm -hmm. But hard is no excuse not to do it. Glory. Difficulty is no excuse. I mean, we, we, if if somebody is struggling to stay on the wagon, and they say it is so hard to do it, it is hard, but but it being hard is not an acceptable reason to go back. Glory. Why? Because going back is just that. Going back. <laughs> Everything that you left back there comes rushing up. Mm. It becomes, it becomes, it, 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 it's your life begins to, to fall apart again. Why? Mm. Because you allow what was gone to come back. So if God has given us his spirit and we give us the ability to think sober-mindedly with him, to focus on him, and we choose not to, guess what? That's when the old you show up. Mm. Mm. And, and sometimes we take pride in that joker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now, you don't want the old me to show up now. Look, you, now you should have caught, caught me two, three years ago. You come up here two, three years. Uh-huh. Oh, I feel I feel the old nature jumping up in here. See, we sometimes we take pride in that. See how y'all laughing? Uh -huh. We take pride in that stuff, right? Don't y'all know that's irrational. Because 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 we put faith got one direction. We press on toward the bar. To go back, reach back and get that old joker, he he, he ain't going nowhere. Mm. That, that's that's the one that Paul says, who's gonna deliver me from this body of death? Uh -huh. <laughs> You see, who, who going to cut me free from this dead man? Uh -huh. That's what we want. We want the Christ to cut us free from the dead man, but we want enough of him around so we can regulate when we need to. Come on, Pastor. Jesus. Jesus. Now, that's not sober-minded. Mm. You know, no, 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 no. That's like, that's like, that's like having a, 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 an automatic assault weapon saying you hunt rabbits. Wow. Mm. <laughs> it's... It, it may be a reason, but it's not a good one. Mm. So, so ha that's not that's not a good reason to keep him around, mm. keep the old nature around. We Paul says that that be sober, sober minded. He, he says, I fought the good fight. Mm -hmm. Paul had to fight. Think about it. He had to fight to keep his mind on Christ. All the stuff he went through, mm. shipwreck, stone. <laughs> Beaten, rejected, uh, uh, folk afraid of him. Even when he got his life together, people didn't want to talk to him. They ran from him. They were afraid of him. Also, he can end up dying, executed in Rome. Mm -hmm. What is that? Mm -hmm. Well, 
After I've done all I did for you, Jesus, you gonna hang me on a cross? Mm. You gonna cut my head off? After all I did for you, you gonna mm. let them starve me? Mm. I, I wrote so many books. I, 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 I helped so many people. I preached about so many folks. I did so many people. And now you gonna let my eyes go? You gonna, you gonna hurt me like that? What? Think of how Paul had opportunity after well, opportunity well. that he could have complained, he could have quit, could have turned around, could have said it's over. We know he'll change teams. He did it before. He mm -hmm. changed teams on Damascus Road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he could have traded teams. He said, ah, all right, Jesus, you too hard. I'm going over here with Zeus. Mm -hmm. He could have done that, but he didn't. That's right. Why? Because when you keep your mind on Christ, you understand that no matter what you go through, you're doing it for God's glory, and there's never a, a, a time where the Lord ain't got you. There's never a time when God is not providing for you. See, we want to say, we want to take that benefit without the responsibility or obligation of holiness. We yeah. want to say, God got me. God's looking for me. He's looking out for me. He's doing, he is. He is, he is. But it works to your benefit when you're following him. Wow. Mm -hmm. It, it, it works. It works well when you're doing it God's God's way. All right. Amen. All right. So so then he says he says he says to them um, that you what you gotta do is endure mm. suffering mm -hmm. because the truth is if you live with a sound mind based upon the truth of Jesus Christ and the world in which we live, you are gonna have some suffering to do. Mm. Folk, you gonna eat, folk ain't gonna want to talk to you. Mm. Folk gonna think that there's something wrong with you. They're gonna, they're gonna say you're narrow-minded, that you're bigoted. They're gonna say that you're that somehow you you, you think you're better than everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. What make you think you right? What make what what make your Jesus better than my Muhammad? Mm. They mean they're gonna tell you all kinds of stuff, and they're gonna this gonna make make you out to be this 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 ignorant, hateful. Um, Difficult to get along with person who have no clue what real life is all about. Come on, Pastor. That's how they're gonna try to make you feel. And you have some suffering to do. There's gonna be some lonely nights. There's gonna be some sometimes you go home like feeling like why 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 they don't understand? Why they don't understand me? Why can't they love me like I'm trying to love them? Yeah. Why 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 can't I have the same privilege to love my Jesus mm -hmm. as they demand to love their boo? Mm -hmm. Why 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 do why does the world hate me because because I just want to love Jesus because Jesus said yes. that they don't hate you because they first hated me. Hated me. Mm -hmm. So when we when we look at this, Paul is saying to, to his young son Timothy, man, I know what I'm telling you to do, but just get ready. Yes. Because you're going to have to endure. Now, doesn't that fly in the face of today's gospel? Come on, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Today's gospel is all, all about just tell God what you want, he'll give it to you. Glory. If you plant the right seed, you're gonna you're gonna reap a harvest. Yeah. If you pray right, your body gonna be healed. Right. That that your family gonna be all together. Mm -hmm. it, it, the, the day's gospel is no cross. God, you pick up. This is my Bible. This is what it can do. God loves me so much. That's 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 what that's what that's what He does. And there's no cross. There's no there's no there's no um, demand on us to live holy and to 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 be uh, encounter the things the difficult places in life. And demonstrate to the world that there's a Jesus who can get you through. Mm -hmm. That I ain't got to lie myself through. I ain't got to sleep with folk to get through. I ain't got to steal to get through. I ain't got to cut you down and knock you down to get through. There's a Jesus who will get me through the hard places if I trust him. Mm -hmm. But the problem is we don't we don't we, we, we don't we don't give Jesus that kind of credit. Mm -hmm. So we we resort to the same thing the world resort to. Mm -hmm. In the difficult places, we lie like they lie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We make the same connections, same moves that they make. We go to the same people they go to mm -hmm. because we want we want to make it. And so we don't really trust God is what I'm saying. Is that if, if we're going to trust God to get through, then we have this a testimony to the world that difficult places, difficult times can be negotiated by a strong God. Hallelujah. Your hard place can be conquered by an all-sufficient God. Hallelujah. But you got to be willing. You got to be willing. You got to be willing to do it. My, my, I, uh, when, I, I, when I was a, a teen, not, I guess I was a teenager, I was going to, to school, to college, and me and my friends was on, on 65, around Nashville, Tennessee, on a hill, and 
and it was covered with ice, about an inch of ice. We had an ice storm, and I was trying to get there. He was driving. My car, he was driving. Ah, I regret that to this day. But my car, he was driving. And he, he lost control of the car, and the car spun around on, on 65 South and ended up across the highway on 65 South at the bottom of an ice-covered hill. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay? So here comes, here comes his car. And it's, 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 it's flying. But it's going to hit his side. He's, he's on the driver's side, and I'm on the passenger side. So he says to me, get out, get out, get out, get out. Because he wanted me to get out the car, so he got out the car. And I said, you crazy. And I didn't get out the car. The car, hit, the car hit our car, boom, spun it all around. We was both okay. What would happen if I got out the car? Oh, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be here tonight, right? Yeah. See, that's the same way it is when we're trusting Jesus. Come on, Pastor. Mm -hmm. We're at the bottom of life, and we look up, and everything is sliding down on us. Here comes everything. And everything wow. in you tell yeah. you to get out, Come get on. out, yeah. get out. And you have to have enough confidence in the God that you're resting in to say, I'm not going. I'm, not I'm, go I'm going to let Jesus take the hit. Yeah. Ah. Mm -hmm. You see, if, if I had that car, the car would have took the hit, I would have. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Let Jesus take the hit. I'm staying in him. That's the safe place. My car was total. We had to catch the bus to school. Mm -hmm. He didn't even help me replace the car. Mm -hmm. So... So I lost some stuff. and I lost my Come car. On, I lost yeah. stuff. Yeah. But what I kept was my life. And he oh, got me yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you trust God, you may lose some stuff. Yeah. 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 You, might, you might get roughed up a little bit. Right. But you're going to get through it. But if you get out, you put your life in jeopardy. Mm. If you start trying to do it on your own, when you start trying to, mm. to, to fix it and, and handle it, and do it apart from the design mm. and desire of God, Hallelujah. you end up in deep trouble because you step Hallelujah. out. Mm. So yes, he got you until you step out and do it on your own. Yeah. Yeah. So he's still there. Mm -hmm. Now you know what? Thank you, Lord. I'm just going to push this a little further. If I had gotten out the car, mm -hmm. I would have first been hit by my car. Mm -hmm. uh, you with me? Mm -hmm. If I had got out the car, the, the car coming down the hill would have hit my car, and then my car would have hit me. Jesus. So, say, let's, let's go back. Let's, let's play this a little further. I'm at the bottom of life, resting in Christ. Here comes all this trouble sliding down hill. I can see it coming. It's going to hit me. I get foolish. I jump out. What did I first get hit by? I first get hit by the Lord telling me, you messed up. Repent. Come back. Get back in here. But if I choose not to do that, then I suffer the pain. See, most of us, we, we, we run away from a Christ who hits us before he allowed the one coming to hit us. Christ hits us first. He says, repent. Turn around. Do it the right way. I got you. In other words, get back in. But what we do is we say, no, I'm going to outrun. <laughs> <laughs> we say, I'm going to outrun this. I got this. Uh, I can outrun it. And we get ran over. Yeah. And then we, then we blame Jesus. Uh -huh. Why you let that we blame the Lord because he didn't stop the car that he told us that's going to hit us. So we, y'all see it, right? Uh -huh. Amen. I don't want to push it too much further because it's going to collapse on itself. But, but, but understand that it's Christ. Christ, he holds us. And, and Paul is saying to Timothy, Listen, son, endure the suffering. Hallelujah. Endure it. Don't retreat. Don't run away. Don't give up. Don't throw your hand. Don't declare you had enough. Don't say you ain't going to do it no more. Don't, don't, don't turn around and fight them like they fighting you. Jesus. Don't do it. Don't, do it. don't lose your sober mind over their Hallelujah. evilness. Hallelujah. Don't give up your rational, holy yeah. thought because uh. there's pain in your life. Hallelujah. Don't do it. Don't let the challenges that's coming up on you, the pressures that's up against you, the, 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 the stuff that's going on in your life, don't let it make you think irrationally. Don't make it, make it lose your soberness. Mm. Don't go take a drink because life gets hard. Mm. Don't, don't fail to forgive because they didn't ask for forgiveness. Mm. Don't do it because if you do, if you do, then, then the suffering 
will, will, will be to your destruction and not just theirs. You with me? Yeah. All right. So he says, don't, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Then he says, well, I, I, you, you can watch me if you want to because, see, I finished the race. <laughs> see, he know Paul. It's just something. Paul was writing this kind of letter knowing that he's just probably days away mm. Mm -hmm. from being executed for Christ. Hallelujah. He, he is in, the first time he was in Roman jail, he was like in, uh, what, what they call it, uh, uh, when they, when they lock you up in your own house. Uh, house, house arrest. House arrest. House arrest. He, he was like in house arrest. Mm -hmm. Folk could come visit him. They could bring him food. Right, right. He, held, he held classes. He was <laughs> teaching people. Right. That's the first time he was in Roman prison. Mm. Now he's in there in jail. Mm -hmm. It's a different story. Oh, Homeboy yeah. locked up. Yeah. He probably down there with the rats and the dungeons and the dirt. He already got a little, a little, little writing instrument. In fact, he said, "Look, somebody bring a coat of coal." So it's, it, it, mm -hmm. there's some stuff going on here mm -hmm. that that this fellow is is now. But he's writing this letter to Timothy saying, "You're gonna endure it. Jesus. You're gonna be okay." Jesus. And look at me. You see where I'm at. Mm. But but I finished my race. Jesus. What do you mean, Paul? I bore what God assigned to me. You see, it's God. Who in here think that God is in charge? Anybody? Who, who think God is in absolute, total, complete charge in charge? Without that? You think that? Yes. Who think that there's something, sometimes, or something that rules, uh, that outvotes God and rule over God or, proves, or supersedes God's authority at some point in our life? Mm -mm. Nothing? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So then it we, we do good answer. But we do. But but if 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 God is an absolute total complete charge, yeah, then doesn't that mean that He's in charge in the bad places in our lives too? Come on, Pastor. If God's in charge when I'm blessed, ooh, is He in charge when I'm challenged? If God's in charge when I got money, is He in charge when I'm broke? If, if God's in charge when, when I'm well, is he also in charge when I'm sick? Mm. If God's in charge when I got a boot, mm -hmm. is he in charge when I'm lonely? Mm -hmm. See, if God is in charge, then God is in charge. Yeah. And we have to obey him and treat him the same all the time. But you know, the truth of the matter is, we serve God as though he's in charge in the middle. Come on, Pastor. Mm -hmm. We like the God, does that song, the man in the mirror? We like God in the middle. <laughs> because when we're on the mountaintops of life, mm -hmm. life is doing too good to be worried about God. Mm -hmm. well. When we're in the, the very lowest part of life, the deepest valleys of life, life is too hard. How did God put me here? Now we're mad at God. Mm -hmm. So we like God in the middle. I like God on the way to the blessing, on the way down to trouble. God, 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 give me what I need. God, give me what I need. I got it. Okay, thank you, God. See you later. Mm -hmm. I started to slide down. God, protect me. God, help me. God, don't let me go down there. God, help me. Help me. Oh, I'm down there. God, why let me get here? <laughs> we like God in the middle. Come on, Pastor. We got to deal with a God who has the control over the whole game. Yes. It's not just to transition from good to bad or bad to good. Mm -hmm. He's a God. So, so when I got money, when I, I pay my tithes. When I when I'm with somebody, I treat them right. When 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 I'm the one, I help folk. I don't I don't be so protective. If I'm down there alone, I still glorify God. I still magnify God. My life is still giving God honor and still praising God. Why? Because that's where I'm at. It's, so he says, endure, man. Cause life. When's the last time you had a day without any challenge? No, everything was just perfect. It went well. You didn't. You there, there was no. There was no challenge. No stomachache. No headache. No bad phone call. No <laughs> crazy kids. All the bills. No bills was collected. That worry about no bill. I mean, you wasn't tired. Your feet didn't hurt. Yeah. You, 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 when's the last day? There's no such thing. So if you're going to live for God, really, you're going to have to endure. <laughs> you're going to have to be able to bear the, the, the conditions of life in a way. Where's the last day you made it through a whole day when no one got on your nerves, including yourself? 
<laughs> When's the last time mm-hmm. you went through and said, what? what? Mm-hmm. You didn't have to say that. <laughs> Nobody got on your nerve. No. The, even when you by yourself, you get on your own nerve. Yeah, Why did I do that? Right? So, so my, point, my point is this. You're going to have to endure something. Right. So when Paul, what Paul is saying is get the sober mind so when you endure, God gets the glory. Hallelujah. Keep your mind stayed on Christ so when you walk through the valley, it's God that you can magnify, mm. that you can trust God on the mountain, in the valley, and in between. Get your mind stayed on him and do his will. Endure, he says, endure, endure. Endure what it is that, that God has placed on your life. Don't quit. Mm-hmm. Don't quit. Now understand, retreat <coughs> does not necessarily mean return. Okay. Most of us say, most of us, when we retreat, we say, but I didn't go back. Retreat ain't going back. Retreat is simply a change of direction. It's a disengagement. Mm -hmm. to retreat I disengage so that's why you can backslide in church Mm -hmm. you just disengage Mm -hmm. and and, and and here's here's the tricky part of of retreat disengaging backsliding is nobody really knows but you and God Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nobody really knows because you're doing the same stuff you always done Jesus. You just don't care about it as much. Mm-hmm. You're doing the same stuff you really that you always done. But you know there's more God wants you to do, but you don't do it. But, but you don't have to do it because nobody knows that you ain't doing it because you're doing the stuff you've always done. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm living just I I'm I'm, I'm I'm preaching every Sunday like I've always preached. I'm mm-hmm. teaching every Thursday like I always did. But nobody knows that God is telling me to go out here and start this ministry. Mm-hmm. Just me and God. Mm-hmm. So I choose not to do that. So I disengage, I retreat from doing God's will and, and accomplishing what God wants me to accomplish and I don't have to be, be accountable to any of y'all because y'all don't know. Mm-hmm. 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 But it shows up though. Mm-hmm. It shows up in our lives. After a while, because what happens is it starts eroding what you do. Come mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. You see, it's not, if, if I stop going, and remember, faith has one direction, it moves forward. Mm-hmm. So if I stop moving forward, then what's behind me starts catching up. Uh, and it starts ooh. eroding what I'm doing. Yeah. So 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 I stop moving forward, what's behind me catch up. And so where I used to, to be able to 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 preach and on on, on, on Sunday, now I, I stand but the power's not there. Come on, Pastor. Now now I, I used to I, I, I used to be able to to people would get there and their, their lives would start start changing. They feel like something's touching them. Now they're like, what's he talking about? Come on, Pastor. And then, and then it goes from there to maybe I don't preach as often. I start bringing more people in, mm. and just to use me. So you, you figure out what yours is. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, it shows. Or, or my attitude changed. Mm-hmm. I used to be nice at bedside, <laughs> and now at bedside, you get a frown, a prayer, and a goodbye. All right. No, it, 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 that's, that's why I used. To, I used to be nice when when I would visit someone's home or or, or after church. After church, we come home talk. I used to be nice. You shake my hand. Let's talk. Hey, pastor, how you doing? That used to be nice. Mm-hmm. But I, I've disengaged. And what's caught me now is I ain't so nice no more. I'm short. I, I shake your hand. I run to my office. I get my coat. I'm gone. I ain't got time. I ain't look. I didn't do what I came here to do. I'm hey. done. I'm going home. I'm tired. Come on, pastor. Later for y'all. See, because why? Mm-hmm. Because now it's it's about the the function. Not the peach. Jesus, mm-hmm. that's good. Pastor. Because it's changed. That's good. Mm-hmm. What was back there has caught up. Mm-hmm. My Jesus. attitude, my personality Jesus. has changed. Now, so what? So I'm not really glorifying God anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm going through the paces. So I don't have to feel guilty about not doing it. I say, God, mm-hmm. that's like that's like lying with the truth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was like somebody ever lied. You know, <laughs> if people ever lied with with the truth, they ever lied to tell you the fact. See. If my if my if my if my um, if my cousin is is a veterinarian, mm-hmm. right, and and I go to this place and they say uh, they're giving military discounts mm-hmm. to all family members 
of a mil of 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 of, of, of vets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I walked to the counter and said, "My cousin is a vet," <laughs> and they give me the discount. Go ahead, Pastor. Oh, a lot of people say, I didn't lie. I didn't lie. That's what they would say. I didn't lie. I said my cousin was a vet. He is a vet. Some of y'all sitting right now saying, well, that's not really a lie. Some, some of y'all saying it right now. Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. Don't look around. But some of y'all saying, that ain't no lie. It is a lie. Because the intent was to deceive for personal benefit. Lie. I lied with the truth. And that's so, so when I get, get, get in the process of just just doing it because because it's my function, it's my activity. But I'm not really about glorifying God. I ain't really about serving God. Mm-hmm. I don't really care about the people I do it with. I'm just doing it because it's my function. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's retreat. That's mm-hmm. that's backslide. That's that's in the Ooh. corporate world they call it retiring in place. Jesus. I'm just I ain't doing nothing moving Ooh. forward. I just do enough for the day to end, and I can leave. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. but that's but so he's saying don't. Don't don't do it. Mm. Don't don't do that. Finish the race. Finish mm. strong. Run. Yeah. Finish strong. Run. Do the work. That, that, don't don't disengage. Mm. Just because you didn't go back to to the corner, don't mean the corner didn't come to meet you. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. All right. So we have to make sure that we're we're living holy. Don't go back. Okay. Amen. All right. Cause Paul said, "Look, it's your turn now, man." <laughs> Who do you got in your body that you're training, you're talking to, that you're living holy enough that you can turn to them and say, it's your turn now. Jesus. Well, mm-hmm. well. It's your turn. Mm-hmm. That's what Paul said. Paul said, I've already been poured out like a drink offering. I've already given my life so that you can become a better sacrifice. I'm already doing that. Mm-hmm. So you need to do it. Pour your life out. So that other folk can be a better sacrifice. Mm. Can, that you can you help people fill out what they offer to God. Mm. See, we, we're so busy trying to do what we think will twist God's arm, make God give us what we need, that we forget that we're here to serve him. <laughs> <laughs> you see, we, we, we treat God like 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 he's this slot machine. If we get all the right com- the right combination, he's gonna release a reward. <laughs> that, that's not who what God didn't put us here so he can serve us. And and all the preaching and teaching that's around us talks about how to get God to give you what you need. That's the wrong approach. Amen. You know what? I challenge you to by today's preaching stand. I hope. I hope I do it differently. I pray I do it differently. But but by the preaching, the 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 biblical teaching on the plant the seed and it'll come back to you. And I uh, uh uh. just, just live for your own righteousness and holiness and all that, mm. all that, that kind of thing. I, I challenge you to look in your New Testament and find me someone who will be a good Christian by that standard. Because mm. all of them died. Mm-hmm. All of them got sick. All of them suffered. They were all broke. Mm-hmm. So by, 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 the, by the standard, <laughs> by the standard of the church today, none of them would have been good Christians. Jesus. Which one of them? Which one of them sowed and reaped? Mm. Well, which one? Which, which which one? Which one of them just just kept living sinfully and and, and unholy and walked in the blessings of God? Mm. Which one? Hallelujah. See, that's not what your Bible teach. Mm-hmm. That's why you got to read your Word. You, you can't just live unholy and nasty and raggedy and say, well, I got grace. You got grace, you didn't kill you because you're living nasty. <laughs> but you still got to, you got to repent and get right. Mm. We still got to live holy. That's right. We do. That's true. We can't just, just look at your word. Don't take my word for it. Look at your word. Mm-hmm. Look, at the, look, at, look at them. Look at the disciples. Look at all of the, the women. Which one of them live like the like the, the popular church tell you you can live? Mm. Which one of them just live for this? The only one I can think of is Judah. He hung himself. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> Judas did some stuff for money. Mm. <laughs> and he ended up giving all the money back. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
Judas betrayed Christ, trying to do it his way, and ended up had killing himself. Mm. Come on. Mm. Who, nobody else? Amen. Nobody else. So endure. Just be ready to endure what God has done. The last, the last piece is, is, he says, do the work of an evangelist. Mm -hmm. don't, don't just um, read the gospel like a dream book. Mm -hmm. You read the gospel to find out what's in it for you. You know, I paid my tithe. What's that mean? Mm. Mm. I forgave somebody once. What's that mean? Mm. <laughs> no, you. It's not. It's not. It's not that that we go. We're reading God's word so we can hold God accountable to make God do what God already promised He would do. Mm. I do not. I do not. I do not have to to hold you accountable and. And, and, and make you get in your car and drive home after the Bible study is over. Mm -hmm. I ain't got to worry about and, and say, no, you're going to drive your car home. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make you do no, no, I ain't got to make you do that. <laughs> you do that. That's what you want to do. That's what, you, that's what you're going to do. That's what you're predisposed to do. Right. That's your plan. Right. That's so we ain't gotta make God act like God. I ain't gotta make God. I ain't gotta make God bless me. Make God do good. Make God be holy. I ain't gotta do what I do to force God's hands for God to do what I need God to do. I ain't gotta do that because God is God. He gonna be God. What I got to do is discover His will. Get in it. So when He's being God, I get blessed. Hallelujah. I gotta discover His will and get in it. Get in it. That means keep the faith. That means that we got to um, study this gospel, that we got to get his word and stand guardian over his word. Protect the gospel, not only the gospel that we preach, but the gospel that we live by. Protect the gospel mm -hmm. that you live by. Mm -hmm. What are the truths of God's word that you live by? What are the truths that you live by? What are they? Where did it come from? When you make choices, what are the what are what are the underpinnings of your decision making? Is it just what's good for you, what's gonna make you feel good, what's gonna work for you, or is it what you believe God's will is? Mm -hmm. Do you do what you do because you you know that this is how I get out, or this is how I get by, or this is how I'm gonna make my ends meet? Or do you do it because you believe that this is God's word and what God has planned for your life? How do you make your choices? What gospel, Clifford Wright Sr., do you live by? Well. What are the truths out of God's word do you live by? See, we have to stand in front of that mirror because we are the world that Paul warned Timothy of. We're living in that world. And we have to make sure that we're seeking out the truth of God and living by it. It's not enough that the world say we're right. It's not enough that we can win a debate or an argument. Well. It's not enough that we can find a scripture that we can twist and if we look at it just right, it'll justify our position. <laughs> <laughs> it's not enough. Uh. We have to know that when we look at ourselves, our spirits, our minds stripped of, 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 of all the surroundings, that what we see is somebody who is seeking and living their lives based upon who the truth of God is. Not the truth of my condition, mm -hmm. the truth of God. What, what if the people refused to go to cross the Red Sea because the condition was they saw too much water? <laughs> that was the condition. So we can't, we don't live our lives based on the condition. We build we live our lives based on the truth of God's word. Amen. That's what's called faith. Amen. All right. Amen. 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 All right. Your guardians, your guardians of the gospel, the gospel that you preach, but more importantly, the gospel that you live by. Jesus. All right. Amen. Questions, concerns, thoughts. Questions, concerns, thoughts. All right, come on, let's play.